What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're working on the 1996 Toyota Camry again, and we are replacing the transmission fluid. No, I'm not flushing it. I'm just going to do a drain and fill, actually several drain and fills, three to be specific. I'm gonna drain it and fill it three times in a row. That way I get the most out of the transmission, but I don't wanna get all of it out. I don't wanna flush it. I don't wanna do any of that. I just wanna drain and fill three times. I'm only gonna show it once because obviously it's the same thing over and over. And I wasn't gonna film this, but I figured that a lot of you guys out there might have the need to drain and fill your transmission. And I just wanna show you how it's done. This is going to work with the four speed automatic. This is the V6, the 1MZ FE with the A541E transmission. A lot of them are gonna be very similar. So it's just a general procedure, but here's how you do it. This is the fluid I'm gonna be using, Dexron 5. When this car came out, it required Dexron 3. And yes, this is AC Delco, it's GM, but it needs Dexron and Dexron is mainly for GM vehicles. And this was the best deal I could find out there and it's decent fluid, so I went with it. To start off, I'm gonna jack up the car and put it on jack stands. I know the location of my jack stands is a little bit weird, but I promise I can explain. So the reason I put my jack stand here in the front of the subframe, not in the back or anywhere else, well, I guess I could have put it on the frame rail back there, but I would have had to lift the car up a little higher, use a different jack stand. So I didn't do that, but I wanted clear access straight down from this drain plug because obviously this is where everything is gonna drain from right here. And the reason I put this one so far back is so that I can slide in from this direction. So with a 10 millimeter Allen, go ahead and loosen up this drain plug. Oh, that's pretty tight. <sighs> ah, there we go. I'm gonna tighten it back up and try to remove my socket first. All right, well, it's not gonna work, so I'm gonna worry about it after. So go ahead and pull this out. Make sure you have a clean, empty container because you wanna measure how much fluid comes out. You also wanna look at the condition when you first pull the drain plug, make sure there's no metal. This actually looks perfectly fine, just dirty. Go ahead and smell it. It does not smell, if it smells burnt, that's bad news. You've waited way too long. This one is, it just smells like transmission fluid. It's just dirty. It's very dirty, actually. But. It doesn't feel gritty. It doesn't feel like there's debris in it. I didn't see any sort of metal flakes. It doesn't smell burnt. So I'd say this is perfectly fine to drain and refill. All right, I'm just gonna let this do its thing and I'm gonna get my socket separated from the plug. Again, I started with a clean and empty collection bucket because I wanted to measure exactly how much fluid comes out. That way I know exactly how much to put in. Yes, there is a dipstick and you can go by the dipstick, but it's also good to know how much comes out so you know how much you put in. I know mine was perfectly filled to the full line, so if I put in as much as it comes out, I know I'm good. All right, it's down to a steady drip, very slow, so I'm gonna call that done for now. Cap it off, and now let's add some fluid. Let's snug it up. Oh, good, this came out. Transmission fluid dipstick is located between the engine and this cruise control module here. So pull back on the tab, pull the dipstick up, get yourself a nice clean funnel. I have this long neck funnel, which works best for me. Now I measure two and a half quarts of transmission fluid that came out. So I'm gonna put two and a half back in. This container has four quarts. So as soon as I get to one and a half, I know I've put two in. As I'm putting fluid in, I can actually hear the breather tube releasing air, which is good. If you have anything that can help you measure the amount of fluid that you're putting in, that would be best. If you go a little bit over, it's not the end of the world or even a little bit under, but just try to get it close. So I have about one and a half quarts left in this bottle, which means I've added two and a half to the transmission. So pull this out, put the dipstick back in. And now we're gonna go start the engine. So this is when it gets, well, I'm not gonna lie, a little bit sketchy because what you wanna do is go through all the gears. And unless you're gonna go for a drive on the highway, you're gonna have to do it on jack stands. So turn the engine on. I'm gonna have my 
my parking brake engaged the whole time. I'm on a flat level surface. Don't go too fast, just make sure it shifts through all the gears. I'm gonna first shift it into reverse. There we go, it engaged reverse, let go of the brake. It'll start spinning the wheels. ABS light came on because my rear tires are not spinning and the fronts are. It'll go away as soon as we drive. Next, I'm gonna put it into first gear, that's L. I wanna lock it in first gear so I make sure that it stays. And I wanna shift it myself. All right, second. With the car in second, I'm gonna turn off overdrive so that it does not shift into fourth, just to third. And once you shift it into drive with overdrive off, it'll shift into third, not fourth. There we go. That's third. Overdrive off. All right, we're going a little bit scary fast here. The car's shaking, but whatever, keep on going. All right, so that's overdrive. Let's slow it down. Downshift it to third. Downshift it to second and downshift it to first. Okay, bring it back to neutral. Don't forget to slow the wheels down with the brakes because if you put it in park and the wheels are still spinning, you're gonna hear some horrible noises. All right, now shut it off. Let's do it all over again. I'm gonna go ahead and drain the fluid, fill it back up, run it through the gears again. I'm gonna do this three times total, so two more times because I've already done it once, and then I'll be back with the final fill up. So I'm on the last drain here, the third drain. As you can see, the fluid is coming out a lot cleaner. It's obviously not perfect, but it's a lot cleaner than it was. I'm gonna let this finish dripping, and then I'm gonna cap it off, and that'll be it for draining. All right, that's good about right there. It's gonna be dripping all night if I wait for it. Snug it up. Don't over tighten it, but make sure it's nice and snug. And typically I'd be using brake parts cleaner to clean off the area, but I ran out. What are you gonna do? Just use a rag. And with that capped off, it's time to do the last refill. And, well, I thought about it, and I think I'm gonna rebuild the transmission because uh, it's worked hard all its life, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rebuild it. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put some of this rebuild in a bottle right here. I'm just kidding. Nothing's wrong with it. It's just old and tired, so this will help it. The trick to this is uh, you pour some in while that goes down the drain, fill this up with transmission fluid, and you dilute it. Then it'll go in easier. The only trick is keep track of how much you put in. So this bottle is one quart, and right here I have exactly three quarts, which means at the end of everything, this needs to be empty, and this needs to have a quart and a half left. That'll make a total of two and a half quarts. Then I'll check it on the dipstick. So go ahead and combine your fluids here. I should use a funnel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour this into an empty container. So I poured the Lucas into this empty container of transmission fluid. So I know I have just under a quart of fluid in here. I put some new transmission fluid into the bottle of Lucas. I'm gonna mix the transmission fluid around in here to dilute the rest of the Lucas, then pour it in here, mix that, dilute the Lucas that's in there, and then pour it all into the car. Just make sure, however you measure it out, make sure you don't overfill it. For me, it's two and a half quarts in total. Okay, I've mixed this around, so whatever was in here, has been diluted. I'm gonna dump it all into the used container of transmission fluid, which contains all Lucas. And then I'm gonna mix this around, and at the end I'm gonna take a reading and make sure that I have two and a half quarts in total. I'm reading one and a half quarts, so I need to add a little bit of transmission fluid, which is actually gonna work out in my favor because I need this to be thinner. All right, I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna cap this and mix it up. Don't shake it too violently because you don't wanna aerate the fluid too much. Just mix it around. All right, with everything mixed up, I'm gonna pour in the rest of my fluid. As you can see, this is a little bit thicker and it's making a mess, so that's great. All right, I'm pouring in the last of the fluid here. And there you have it. That's all of it. All right, I'm gonna let the funnel finish draining. Remove the funnel. 
make sure you don't make too much of a mess. All right, at this point, you can put in your dipstick. You're not gonna get a good reading right away because the dipstick tube is covered in transmission fluid. So you're gonna have to wait a little bit, run the car. Well, first of all, you the only way to check this transmission fluid is with the car running, in park, at operating temperature, preferably after you've gone through all the gears first. But if you can't, that's fine. Just keep it in park at operating temperature. So I'm not gonna go through the process of checking it because like I said, you just turn on the car, you warm it up, and then you just check the fluid. You basically want it to be in between these two lines here. It gives you two little dotted lines. It, it gives you four little marks, two for cold, two for hot. You can check it when it's cold, but it's gonna be most accurate when it's hot because the torque converter and all the solenoids and the valves are gonna have fluid packed in them. So that's why I said it's best to check it when it's hot. If you have to when it's cold, that's fine. Just make sure the engine is running. I hate this dipstick. Just make sure the engine is running. Uh, this car, you have to check it with the engine running and in park or neutral, either works. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, anything you wanna say, leave it down in the comment section below. As always, tools and parts, or in this case, fluids are gonna be linked in the description. So check those out if you're interested. And if this did help you out, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share with anyone that you know might need to see this. And having said that, I'll see you in the next one.